What is up guys, welcome back to Photo Video Entrepreneurs. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Chances are you guys had searched the very same thing I did, which is how to fix moray or aliasing in your video projects. And chances are you probably didn't even know what the term was called and it took you forever to even just find that. So I'm gonna show you two things today. I'm gonna show you how to fix it with subjects that are sitting in place and subjects that are actually moving in your frame. And just to be clear, this issue happens when your subject is wearing a very fine lined shirt, like a dress shirt or like a suit jacket that has like those very fine pinstripes. So the best thing to do obviously is to anticipate that ahead of time, tell your subject, just make sure you're wearing solid colors with no lines. But if you forget, there's definitely a workaround. This had saved my life, so I wanted to make a video because there's stuff out there right now that's a year old, two years old, three years old, five years old, and Premiere Pro just obviously keeps changing so much over time. So hopefully this is like an updated video and will really help you guys and save you like it has saved me. So let's get into it. Okay, so we are in Premiere Pro and I have my first shot here where my subject is standing in the center of the frame talking to camera and then my second shot he's walking and talking. So what I'll first do is I'll play both clips back for you just so you can see what the issue was for me. In this room right here we've actually determined the model of businesses for many of our customers. They come to us with an idea and we help shape the way they actually do business. From business processes internally to figuring out what their messaging is to attract their ideal customers, all that creativity happens right here. Thanks so much for coming by and checking us out. If you'd like, please visit us online at cmdsonline.com or give us a call and come on and check it out yourself. So obviously you can see it in both of the shots and I, I dealt with this throughout the entire project. So this technique, what I'm going to be showing you guys, worked in a lot of different types of situations, but I picked the two worst that I really needed it for. This is what I want to show you guys. So this is what we do first. We're going to take the clip that obviously has the aliasing or the more, whatever it's called, and we're going to apply the Gaussian blur effect to the clip. G-A-U. Here it is. Okay, so you're going to click it, you're going to drag it over the clip. Now, um, if you don't see this on the left hand side here, you can just double click on the clip and then go to the effects controls tab like this. And then when you come down, you're gonna see Gaussian Blur. Now, what Gaussian Blur does, it's gonna make the whole clip blurry. We want that, but we want our subject's face to be sharp. So that way it doesn't appear that the shot is blurry to the noticeable eye when things are actually moving. So. What we're gonna do is this. We're gonna speed ahead one frame until we see the actual issue, right? So here it is right here. And you only kind of see it when things are actually moving. Now you always wanna start off small and build your way up gradually. So I usually put it around like three or four just to see if it had fixed the issue uh, with that. So let's see. Right here we've actually determined the model of businesses for many of our customers. They come to us with an idea and we help shape the way they have That's pretty good. I don't really think anyone's gonna notice that. Maybe we can go five, let's see. In this room right here, we've actually determined the model of businesses for many of our customers. They come to us with an idea and we help shape the way they actually do business. So you can see it a little bit, but compared to what it was, I mean, here's the next shot that we're gonna apply it to. This is what it looks like. Idea, and we help shape the way they actually do business. From business process and now internally, this is what it was. So there's definitely a huge difference between the two. So you've applied the Gaussian Blur, we have it on 5.2. You probably get away with four, but that's up to you guys. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to put our subject's face in focus because you can see here that it's blurry. So this is what you do. You use this oval shape. It's called Create Ellipse Mask. And you're gonna click on it and you're gonna drag it over your subject's face. And then you can use these squares to make it smaller. So it's okay if like his neck is in there a little bit. I actually think that's a good thing. And you're gonna make it smaller, bring the top down a little bit here. And now this is the most important thing. You're gonna come down a little bit in your effect and you're gonna click inverted. So that means everything outside of this oval is Gaussian blurred. Everything inside is not, all right? So now when you play back your clip, in this room right here, we've actually determined the model of businesses for many of our customers. They come to us with an idea. So 
a little bit slow on the playback. Yeah, and we help shape the way they actually do business. You get the idea. You can see his head's not moving around too much. So this is fine. We don't have to track him. Everything outside is a little bit blurry, which you can kind of see, but everything inside is much sharper looking. So when you're watching this back and when you're not, you know, obviously there's gonna be B-roll on top of this, so it'll be a lot more disguised, but just for argument's sake for this shot, here we've actually determined the model of businesses for many of our customers. Looks much better. They come to us with an idea and we help shape the way they actually do business. Much happier with that, right? I'll do it again right here. Same exact thing, uh, so in case you missed it the first time, this is a brand new clip without it. So we're gonna go to the effects tab, we're gonna search Gaussian Blur, we're gonna drag it over our clip, it's gonna appear here. Again, if it doesn't appear here, just double click on the clip, and then go to the effects control tab. Come down, Gaussian Blur, and then you're going to add your blurriness, probably around like, oh, that's too much, like four or so. Play it back just to make sure that his shirt is not aliasing or more-ing, whatever you want to call it. From business processes internally to figuring out what their messaging is to attract their ideal customers. So, looks good. Now we're going to grab our oval. We're going to put it over his face. Make it smaller. Like this. Like this. And there's ways to fine tune it too. Like if you click, here, if I zoom in a little bit, and I go to like 150, and scroll up. If you wanna really like shape around his face, you can click outside of these little squares here when, and the pencil automatically appears. You click there and you can drag these little points in and now you can start really getting finer detail around his face. You don't really need to for shots like this because it's far enough away where you're not really gonna notice those fine little differences. So I just keep it a regular oval. And then again, most important part, you wanna make sure that you are hitting inverted and you can see in real time the difference between his face and the rest. His face, look at, his face gets sharper and then everything switches. So his face is sharp, his body is blurry and so is the rest of the shot but you can't really tell because you're looking at a subject's face when they're talking. So we're gonna go back out to, uh, to fit. All right, so that looks good, and now we're gonna play it back just to see how it looks. From business processes internally to figuring out what their messaging is to attract their ideal customers, all that creativity happens right here. Perfect, right, so that looks great. Now, our next shot, you're gonna see how our subject is walking down this walkway up from his building, and his head's moving left to right, front and back, and if we just did the regular oval, he would be moving out of it, and he wouldn't look sharp, he would be moving into the blur. So just watch first. Thanks so much for coming by and checking us out. If you'd like, please visit us online at cmdsonline.com, or give us a call, and come on, check it out yourself. So obviously you can see the moray in his shirt right here, and then you can see like his head starts here, and then he's all the way he's all the way over here, and then he's coming all the way back here. We want to do the same exact thing we just did in the last shot, but we need to track that oval with keyframing. So this actual effect kind of does that a little bit for you, but you kind of, you have to keep an eye on it because it's not perfect. So same thing, we're gonna grab our Gaussian blur, we're gonna put it over our clip. We're gonna come down. Let's see where the issue occurs right here. So let's put it on four. Let's just play it back, see if it's gone. Thanks so much for coming by and checking us out. If you'd like, please visit us online. Yeah, I'm happy with that because he's moving. So you're really just paying attention to everything that's going on. You're not really keying in on his shirt. All right, so we wanna throw on our oval eclipse mask. So we're gonna put it on his face here. Make it smaller. Right there, right there. And now we know he's gonna be moving. He's definitely gonna move out of that, right? First, before we do that, we want to make sure it's inverted. That's the key, invert, right? Click that, his face is sharp, everything else is blurred out. The shirt's fixed, technically. But now we wanna make sure that this oval follows him as he goes. So if you look over here, it says mask path. And then if you look all the way on the right, um, not this play 
uh, button right here. If you click that, I believe it will try to do it on auto, but you don't want that because it's not perfect. So you click this one right here, track, selected mask forward one frame. So click that. Now he moved forward a frame and if you saw, it actually followed him one frame pretty well. So, and it made a keyframe automatically. See how that's highlighted in blue right there? And it's, you could see it over here too. So, so that's good. So let's click it again. Good, good, good. And we'll just keep going until I'll show you where we have to adjust it. See, like right here, I could probably adjust it a little bit, right? So I'm just gonna slightly adjust it. Don't let go of your mouse when you're moving it because then it'll, it'll jolt all around in the keyframe. So let go right about there. Keep going, good, 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 perfect. So it's doing it, I'm just clicking one by one. It's doing it pretty well here. And the reason why you wanna do it one by one and not click this click this button, play automatically, is because I, I've tried it and it doesn't, it doesn't follow it perfectly. It will make mistakes. So you might as well just take a little bit of extra time and do it yourself. See, this is drastic. He's really moving his head a lot this way now. So I'm just gonna correct it a little bit. I'm gonna center it just a little bit right there. Keep going. And that's what I'm gonna do to the very end. And obviously we have a long way to go, so we'll speed this up. You'll see the time lapse, uh, but I'm gonna speed this up for you guys and get to the end so you can see what I'll do after this. All right, so that's it. So we made it to the very end of our clip. And when you keep hitting this right next track selected mask forward one frame button, once you hit the end, it just won't go anymore. So that's how you'll know it's done. You won't see the frame moving. So I'm just gonna do a quick render. And then once it's done rendering, I'll play it back for you guys so you can see exactly what's been done. And then I'll show you one more time what it was like beforehand just so you can see the difference. All right, so clip is rendered now. Check it out. Here, I'll play back the before for you guys so you can see what that was like. All right, so here's the before again. Thanks so much for coming by and checking us out. If you'd like, please visit us online at cmdsonline.com or give us a call and come on, check it out yourself. So pretty bad with the shirt. Now we'll put the effects back on exactly what we did and then look at the difference. Thanks so much for coming by and checking us out. If you'd like, please visit us online at cmdsonline.com or give us a call and come on, check it out yourself. So that's pretty much the whole effect and now what I'll do is I'll show you quickly what my final edit looked like with my other angle included, with some b-roll shots included, with some music and some graphics and some sound effects and that really helps as well. This is the inspiration room. In this room right here we've actually determined the model of businesses for many of our customers. They come to us with an idea and we help shape the way they actually do business from business processes internally to figuring out what their messaging is to attract their ideal customers, all that creativity happens right here. Thanks so much for coming by and checking us out. If you'd like, please visit us online at cmdsonline.com or give us a call and come on and check it out yourself. So that's it guys, I hope that has helped you. I hope it has saved your project like it has actually saved mine. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, let me know, I'll be very specific in trying to help you if you get confused on anything. If the video has helped you, please let me know, drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every single week. We'll see you guys next time.